Um, even though this is an emotional response exercise, this is one of the few images that you will have noticed so far that is much less abstract than what you have seen. But it makes up for it in the way in which the, the artist has put in his message. Very young artist, George Shaw, he's still in his, he was born in 1966. And the, name, the title of this painting is called Scenes from the Passion, a few days before Christmas. Now, those of you who know your, uh, uh, your scripture well, you know that Scenes from the Passion, Passion is another word for suffering. And the suffering takes place in the week of Easter when Christ is crucified and then Easter Sunday he rises again. And that's how mankind is redeemed. However, this is scenes from the Passion, which is Easter, but the subtitle reads a few days before Christmas. That means a few days before the birth of Christ. So abductively then, okay, let, let's go back to the inductive. I think you were absolutely right. This is a very rundown area near the artist's home in Coventry, in England. Lots of abandoned garages and scrappy little clumps of forest and so on and so forth. And this is an abandoned area uh, in the woods with, with paths leading in, in a couple of different directions. It's uh, a few days before Christmas, winter, and so the, the trees are without their leaves. There are three, three sort of stakes in the ground which point to the ultimate message of the artist, scenes of the passion a few days before Christmas. And so then deductively and abductively, I feel that this image is all about memory and time. Uh, the memory that we have of of the birth of Christ and the foreshadowing of his birth alongside the passion, the suffering that he went through, and then the, the, uh, the, uh, the raising from the dead, which is the Annunciation, isn't it? Resurrection. The resurrection, excuse me, the, the resurrection. Um, so all of that foreshadowing, the time warp, is sort of being played out over here as the artist tries to make meaning in this rundown neighborhood of the suburbs of London, okay? How does he do that? How is he doing that? So there are these three metal stakes in the ground which sort of resemble nature, the, the trees, but uh, not really, they could, they could be part of nature as well. So nature and technology uh, the, the, the stuff of life, the recycling stuff, you know, things that we throw out in our backyard, they're all sort of coming together. The paths that you take into these unknown forests, they are numerous. You could take any one of them. And where would this take you to? So this, this whole thing of what he remembers, what, what he remembers versus what he wants you to forget, Okay, all of this is being played out over here. It's a very, very complex, interlayered, very meaningful image. And there's a lot of religious imagery over here. There's social commentary. If, if you are able to place it in a certain section of, the, of, of a suburb of a big city, you know, what is left of beautiful meadows and beautiful fields there used to be. Um, and also the sense of time. What is this time warp all about? You know, we are foreshadowing something, and yet we are looking forward to the resurrection, to the raising from the dead, to the redemption. So th there's a lot of stuff that's mixed up over here. And does it comment on our life in the 21st century? There's a lot of chaos, a lot of turmoil, so the path is not straight and clear. The distinction between nature and science, technology, or rather the, the, you know, the, the sort of the garbage heap of science, you know, it's not made very clear. And moreover, the artist did this, obviously this is a canvas, and look at the scale, it's not as monumental as some of the others. The paint that he used is a particular paint that you'd use to make, uh, to make hobby airplanes with. It's a particular en enamel which is called Humbrol, Humbrol enamel on board. 
it almost looks like a photograph. Exactly. Very photographic, very specific. And yet, the memory of it is so warped because there is this time synapses, you know, things coming together which don't generally come together. There's a lot of that internal time clock uh, chaos that's going on. So it, again, it's something to think about. You might not like it or you might not agree with what he's saying, but it's something to think about as you go through your role as a leader in interpreting what's in front of you in your daily life. Is the path clear? Where will this path lead to? Um, you know, what is the, you know, how, how do you resolve some of these time um, warps, basically, you know, of things coming together that, that cannot come together? 